Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Wednesday's Penta Bar. My name is Katalin Dumitras, and I'm the principal cloud architect at Pentala. Today, I'll be your host. Let me start by saying that if you encounter any technical issues, such as sound or video issues, please write them in the chat so we can fix them. If you have any questions related to the today's topic, please don't be shy. Write to us about your opinions and your questions. We would love to hear about them. As always, we're bringing you interesting topics from professionals all around the globe. And I hope you're sitting comfortable with the beverage of your choice. If not, now is the time to do it because we are just about to introduce today's special guest, Alex, who is an engineering and DevOps manager from Mexico, will be sharing with us his thoughts on JavaScript operations. Should I build or should I not? Hello, Alex. How are you? Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having me here. Pretty, pretty honored. I'm not sure if we everybody sees your video yet. There we go. Hello, Alex. Yeah. How's the weather? I, I assume it's noon, right? Yeah, it's raining. <laughs> uh, and a, a little worry about that because you know when in Mexico it rains uh, we, sometimes we don't have electricity so <laughs> so well cross fingers well I, I hope we don't have any uh, downtime yeah. for electricity <laughs> yeah. today um, well I'm sure that our viewers are very interested in learning more about you so could you say a few words, please? Uh, well, yes, of course. Well, I am a web developer. I'm mobile. Uh, now adding DevOps tools to my bed, to my world. Um, I work for, I have my own company, I can say, uh, giving training and consultant, consultancy for a lot of uh, private and public sector in Mexico. So I hope that. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> what inspired uh, you to create this uh, this talk for today? Well, you know, the DevOps now is like a trending topic. I can say we, we hear a lot about the DevOps, so so I think that we have a lot of confusion, a lot of doubts about it. So so. It's a DevOps engineer, someone who comes, came from the CSS Mint or from the testing side or from developer side. Or who is a DevOps engineer? So it, especially from the front end side, you know, Angular projects or Angular React view projects. So, so maybe uh, they are going to think about that. So can I be a, a DevOps engineer or is too too far from here? Or, so, so that's the idea, that's my intention of this talk, to, to give some ideas. So it's, you're basically trying to convince um, front-end developers or developers that are maybe working with JavaScript that uh, being a DevOps is not that hard and they should uh, take a leap of faith and to trying out interesting things, interesting new things. Yeah, it's, it's exactly um, how to approach without fear uh, to, to the DevOps side, you know, to know about the whole process, you know, about the whole pipeline uh, until production, you know, front end projects are software projects, so it's like the same. So, so we need people to know the whole pipeline, to have this complete view about the DevOps and of course they, we need these people that, I, I mean, I'm talking about JavaScript, uh, developers to be involved in the whole pipeline. That, that's that we need. For sure, working together is uh, essential. Uh, regardless if you're front end, back end, you know, ops, AI, God knows, blockchain, whatever is left. 
Um, all right, so this sounds fun. Shall we begin? <laughs> yes, sir. Awesome. So, I'm going to share my screen. So, can you see my screen now? Yep. Awesome. Well, let's begin with this talk. Uh, it's about, of course, about DevOps. Um, the name of this talk is JavaScript operation. Should, should I build it or should I not? So, uh, well, this is my cat. <laughs> So the, the title of this talk it was inspired, you know, is this, this song, uh, is should I stay or should I go by The Clash, you know, that The Clash were a pretty, pretty, pretty famous band uh, from the 70s. So it's about this song, I, I can say that it's about, um, um complicated relationship between one of the member of this band and a girl so so i think it's like the relationship between the javascript and the bobs so so <laughs> one sentence of this song says that if i stay there will be trouble and if i go it will be double so so well that's what the, the motivation for this name of my talk. So, so well, uh, as I said, um, a, a little bit about me, I am a dev now doing DevOps, living in Mexico, Mexico City. Um, proud member of the DevOps Institute as, a, as ambassador for Mexico. I'm also part of the GitLab uh, Heroes program. Um, because I know that this uh, international uh, uh, audience well it's just to give some context about me well you know mexico is a uh, mexico city in particular is a pretty big city with more than uh, 22 million people just in the capital but in the whole country well we are a lot <laughs> we are located in north america but technological we belong to latin america so and well, this was something that, like an icebreaker that I, I, I did in another talk in, in Africa, but <laughs> nobody loves, <laughs> but we used to celebrate the day of death in Mexico, but we don't eat uh, them anymore, <laughs> you know, because as this used to do that, but, well, <laughs> we need some context to this joke. So, so, well, at the beginning, I, I will ask to the audience to have this holistic approach to, to DevOps because DevOps can, can mean different things. Uh, it depends on the point of view, you know, if for a tester, DevOps, it's something completely different from a sysadmin or from a Scrum master. So, so DevOps, um, at least at the beginning, we try to, to keep this holistic approach meaning that it's a, a reference to the whole. So um, wh why the bobs? Um, th this is like the um, common definition of the bobs. It's just the combination of depths and, and operation. But well, uh, in my humble opinion, it's, it's not that simple. <laughs> of course it's not. So I like this definition a little. Uh, I think it's a better definition because it implies uh, the combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increases an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity, evolving and improving products at a faster pace than organizations using traditional software. Uh, it's a little better, but I think that this is, uh, I will stick to this one. No, the box is a culture. It's a cultural thing that this is pretty important to have in mind. It's a culture where people, regardless of title or background, work together to imagine, develop, deploy, and operate a system. No? So, so, so I think this is, is a better approach to DevOps. Uh, 
So, well, at this point, I can say that we have this um, cultural change inside companies and, or institutions. So, so we have this side, the human, the human side and the technical side. So, so <laughs> if, if you ask me, I, I can say that humans are way, way too complicated, <laughs> and sometimes more than systems. So, so I, I see a lot, at least right here in Mexico, that we have this superhero culture, no? That is just uh, precisely so, something that we try to avoid, no? We don't have superheroes, uh, firefighters. Uh, that that's the idea of have this DevOps culture. So we have this branch, I can say, of of, of DevOps that is called human ops. That it's related to 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 these human topics. So it's about encouraging teams to consider new ideas and implement best practices around how to look after the team members who look after your systems. No, so humans are pretty important. So what we're seeing now, uh, the last couple of years, is, is an explosion of tools. So, so it, it can be intimidating. So, well, um, yeah, we need to do the bobs. We need to implement the bobs in our company. But how can we approach? Do, do, do we have to implement our own tools? Do, do we have to develop? We, you know, we are developers or which one which one so based on the on the fact that we have several phases on the cycle development software cycle development so we have a lot of tools no there is a huge explosion and i can see <laughs> almost every day a new tool so so it depends if you want to i don't know a tool for testing a tool for containerization a tool for security for monitoring for control uh, versioning systems. I mean, there, there is a, a ton of tools that we can use. So also we have, if you take a look at job board, uh, we are seeing this 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 post, you no, know, looking for for these positions like a DevOps engineer. So sometimes I feel like pretty confused about that because well, what is a DevOps engineer? Oh, maybe because um, <laughs> I, I was reading the, the other day an article about the five shades, shades of the bobs because we have SRR or site reliability engineers, or we have um, uh, automation engineers, or we have infrastructure engineers, or automation testing engineers. <laughs> so. <laughs> or, or even cloud, cloud engineers. So, so I, I think that. As I said, DevOps is a culture. Mm, I am not pretty sure if, if a DevOps engineer is just one, one single role. But for sure, we, we can see that someone must be, or must have the, the general vision of these projects, no? you know? So what we can see now is, is this kind of certifications like a DevOps leader or DevOps manager that almost, at least one person in, in the team must have like like the whole idea and this person must be in charge of of talking with the business you know with the the stakeholders to understand the, the well the business necessity to start with the the with the whole team you know technically with the developers with the testers with the security team and of course with the uh, release engineers. So it's not uh, um, that one person must be a superhero inside the company. No, it's not about that. It's just to have like the, uh, the oil to lubricate the, the whole machinery. It's, it's about that in my humble opinion. So uh, in, in every talk or conference about DevOps, <laughs> Uh, we see this this slide now this infinite loop about the bobs. Uh, sometimes companies add another phase or two phases. I, I have seen that um, some companies add the defense phase because you know the security on onto 
um, we have every day we have attacks to the system. So, so defense is also considered like another phase on the uh, software development cycle. So the, this idea is to have the developers, you know, from the dev side involved in the operation side, meaning release, deploy, operation and monitoring, um, also defend. So, well, I just want to notice that we have this test phase, but in, um, if you allow me, in a better approach to DevOps, the whole cycle uh, testing must be everywhere. So, so it's part of this DevOps culture to have the testing phase. The testing is in, in each phase of the, the cycle, meaning in code, in planning, in monitoring, building. And when you release, you have to take this testing and secure considerations. So now we are seeing a lot of, uh, oh, I see a lot of projects in, in companies right here that still uses the waterfall. The, the waterfall approach to make software. Um, I, I can say that you you can still implement the bobs with a waterfall approach. I mean, it's not uh, it's not about the agile methodology. Methodologies. It, it depends of the of the of the company. But you know, a waterfall is more about the requirements. So we have a lot of companies. I don't know that they have. A, pretty big systems that they don't suffer a lot of changes every day. So, so they, they can, they still do the, the, the waterfall methodology and they are still in, in production and it works and they are going to continue using this, this methodology. So, well, I, I want to say, I want to point out that, well, we can use the bobs in waterfall uh, or traditional systems approach, or you know, with the uh, modern or or more user focus uh, approach to development with the agile methodologies. So the idea is to have this uh, uh, shorter sprint. So maybe if we don't know, or we are not making emphasis on the requirements. So things can change because we don't even know the final product or service so so well devops can can fit both situations or can be a hybrid situation i i i, I have seen a lot of companies that are still doing it's, it's called tib model or by model so so well uh, what i can say is that uh, it's not a recipe it's, it's Every company, which company is different, uh, and talking about the DevOps implementation or approach, is completely different. It depends on the circumstances, you know, a uh, company is uh, maybe or maybe not, it has its own technical debt or not. So there is a lot of factors that, that you must consider. So <clears throat> uh, in this cycle, well, development is continuous. There is no end, uh, so you have to to be aware of that. That um, when uh, uh, software reaches production, it's the beginning of the of the life of the software. So the idea is to to improve the speed, quick distribution, the trust that we give to the whole business. The visibility is pretty important, and we base the bobs on, on you know in, in cloud native uh, technologies, so we can scale our systems but i have to say that um, it can work on, on cloud or not i have seen a lot of clients uh, with bare metal installations i mean on premise so you can have this on cloud bare metal or or hybrid uh, implementations so devops can can work in any environment so uh DevOps must be collaborative. This is one important um, fundamental of DevOps and of course security. So why DevOps in JavaScript? Uh, particularly in JavaScript because, well, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, it's just in the JavaScript side, but 
Uh, what we see a lot today, this is still this, that it works on my machine. So, well, we have my, my installation, my, I don't know, my node, uh, I, I don't know, my, my local uh, development uh, environment in my machine. So, so well, when we go to the to other environments, you know, to Dev, Kua, and uh, uh, Broad, it doesn't work. So, so I like this quote because it simply means that it's your code, it's your accountability. I mean, your responsibility. So you have to to follow the the the, the pipeline. So <laughs> this is fun because it's true. Uh, before the box, we, we say that it works on my machine, and after the box, we say it works on my container. So well, it, it, it is this uh, just a joke. Um, so as as we saw, we have a lot of tools to implement the bobs. Of course, it's, it's going to to depend on several factors and considerations. You can, uh, what we're seeing now is that we have in JavaScript a lot of tools, like this one, like Strider CD, something similar like Jenkins. So you can use it if you want to stick to this no JavaScript whole ecosystem. So we are seeing uh, uh, the racing of this JavaScript or pure JavaScript tools, or maybe this Zeta X tool that is, is kind of fun. I was trying this tool is, you know, when we make a pipeline um, in Jenkins or in another tool, we need to, to write some bash scripting. So with this tool, you can use for JavaScript. So, so well, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, interesting. I, I don't know if it's too, too hipster or I don't know. It's, it's like an experiment, I can say. I have never seen uh, a customer with using these tools. But uh, the, the point here is that uh, to make software can be pretty complex, pretty difficult. So we have this learning curve. So the idea with these tools is to at least uh, at some point to, to be easier. I, I think that we still don't reach this point. So I think that there's, there will be one day that we, we have this facility. And so we are seeing the, a lot of tools just to drag and drop uh, visual editors to make pipelines and and to to make them the infrastructure as a code. So so I think that at least to use one single language program programming language is, is going to be uh, in our advantage. I, I can say. So well, let, let's see the demo. Uh, for this demo, uh, I'm going to just um, see a, a, a pipeline, this is a pipeline making in Jenkins. Um, I, I decided to use Jenkins because it's very popular. Um, well, Jenkins is, is, is made on Java, but well, it's agnostic to the language. I mean, you can have a Python a program or Ruby or JavaScript or, uh, well, it's agnostic to the language. So, well, but the, the pipeline, is 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 made on when well, actually is made on Ruby that is a DSL you know a domain a specific language the idea of Ruby is, is to be um, to be easy at least for, for read so uh, the idea is to have this this is React a project it's like the hello world you no know? you know React is one if not the most popular. JavaScript front end framework. So the idea is, is to make the whole pipeline, you know, testing, building, testing, uh, and production. We are going to provisioning some uh, a Docker image. So, well, it, it's a, uh, uh, well, I think is illustrative concept. So, well, I, I am going to share. Uh, so, I have my console, I'm using Kubuntu. Uh, in, 
in the right side of my terminal. It, this is the, the, the Jenkins running. So I am going to keep the, the service running. And in this one, just to be sure that we have a Docker installed, um, we have two options here, just to download the image from the Docker hub, or, or if not, if we don't have it, uh, at the moment of doing the, the pipeline, you know, the delivery, um, we can download the, the Docker image. So, so Docker is running. So I'm pretty sure about that. So, so well, um, let me see where is my, Okay, this is my 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 Jenkins. Uh, well, I, I already made the for sake of time. I already did the, the pipeline. Uh, I am going to show you the the, the Jenkins file that this is a, the the Angular stone of of this talk. But uh, as you can see, well, I I I, I build the pipeline. Is everything on green? It means that everything is was succeed. So I have this, um, well, in this case, it, of course, it's going to change um, based on the companies. So I have this, the, the software control management, you know, is, is connected to, in this case, to GitHub. So uh, I connect my, my repo that is in GitHub, I, I'm going to show you here. Uh, it's connected to GitHub, so I can make a new branch from from my master branch. So to to apply my test, um, after that I can do the merge, or or can, I can build. I mean, in 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 the pipeline, I, I can make any branches that that are in it. So in this case, it's a pretty simple pipeline. I, I, as you can see, I have the. Uh, but at the beginning, just to go to the to the Git repo. Uh, I, I can use GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, any repo. Is, I mean, uh, Jenkins has a lot of logins, but a lot. There is a huge community of developers doing um, uh, plugins, so you can interface with a lot of system, even with the Slack. If you want to send a message. Uh, uh, just, just to communicate to the team uh, or automatically if it's, it's a build fi fails, you can get the message on, on a Slack or, or via SMS or, or mail, of course. Or... So, so, well, in this case, uh, I have the, the build. I, I am just imagining that I have this bell build phase, the testing phase, and of course the, the delivery phase. So, so well, let's take a look at the taking that in consideration. Let me change to the <laughs> it's because J Jenkins is too too heavy. So my, my, my machine is going to explode. Yeah, <laughs> I can see it. So well. Uh, the the Jenkins files is is as I said is is this groovy, pretty easy syntax. Uh, well, you can read it and you can infer what it's doing. So I, I have this agent. The agent means that where we are going to run our system. So in this case, I am using a Docker image. It's called no, Node 6 Alpine. This is, uh, as I said, if I don't have it locally, it's going to look for in, in the Docker Hub to download the image. And in the arguments, uh, I am just telling, just communicate through this port, uh, 3000. So, so you, you must define the, this communication. So um, Jenkins is using another port and React another. So, well, you have to take care of which port that you're going to use to communicate. 
this is uh, just to have um, a non watch. This is a, a variable. We, we can have several variables that are useful for our uh, delivery purposes. In this case, I am just saying that it's like a non watch flag because note uh, when we build, um, we use some node commands. Sometimes they ask for for something. So in this case, I am just saying, don't ask me anything. Is I am just going to give you everything you need. I am just going to give you. Well, it's already in the package.json. If you are in the JavaScript side, you know that there is this file package.json with all the arguments and parameters that we need. So we are just saying that. Actually, you can have this in, in the package.json. It's up to you. Uh, so the the magic uh, is here you know you define the stages you know these curly braces uh, you can see that we have the three stages build test and deliver so it's a pretty simple pipeline uh, i have seen very complex pipelines using a lot of bash uh, scripting so in this case uh, we define this, this stage and inside the stage, we have the steps. I mean, the, the, the task that we have to do. In this case, I am just running, you know, the NPM install is, so ASH means that is a, um, a, a shell script. So imagine that you are writing the command uh, in the terminal. So it's like the same. So. So we are in the build phase, just installing everything we need. In this case, as you may know, as a JavaScript developer or React developer or Angular, they have this package JSON that if you write npm install, this is going to take this, it's going to look for this file and install all the dependencies, all the dependencies that, that these are stated in this file. So, the, the next step of, of the next is, is stage is test. So in this case, I am calling a, is a, a test dot sh is is a batch script, but it's separated. It's in another file. It's just for I mean, just for to have more control and clarity. I am going to to show you. So. I, I put in a different folder the, the, the script, the scripts, as you can see. Well, this is my, my, my repo of this project that I am going to share uh, with the audience, the, the, if, well, if you want to. So I, I have, for instance, these three uh, scripts. This is because it's not recommended to have a lot of jobs or, or, or or computing processes inside the, the pipeline is, is like a best practice. So if you are going to do, I don't know, a calculation or, or something more complex, it's, it's not recommended to have inside the pipeline. So the, the pipeline could, could be enormous. So, well, the idea is maybe you, you need to split the, the, the complexity of the pipeline. So, uh, as I said, well, I am just calling this test uh, shell script. So it, it's um, these are just messages. I mean, just the important one is here. When I have all the dependencies installed, we we are just running the test. Uh, well, in uh, as you may know, if you are a JavaScript developer, you just write M npm test to run your test. And uh, well, of course, we have in, in the, in the, we are, we have everything uh, in, in the project. I mean, the, the libraries and the, and the test already coded, <laughs> <No>? <laughs> of course. So, so in the same way, I, I, I call another, uh, if everything is okay, it's, it's going to, to follow the pipeline. So we have the, the, the third and final stage that is delivered. So in this moment, I am going to provision in the Docker image to run my, 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 my system of my web application. So, so in this case, you can see that, well, it's not running. 
it, it's on in the board 3000. So, so I, I am going to run the, the pipeline because right now, because the pipeline takes a little bit, can take like a five minutes. So, so I am going to, to build now because it, it can take a while. So, well, I, I'm going to, well, now, now as you can see, it's, it's running the, the, the pipeline. So, well, it started. So, well, I'm going to go back to my uh, Jenkins file. So, this this is the deliver uh, sh the shell script. So, so I can show you. So, what what I'm doing here? Well, you know, the the echo is just some. Uh, sending some messages, no, just for learning purposes, no. So, well, the important thing is the is the build. We are running the the. So, so I am having um, uh, starting the the whole process. And and in this point, I I. I mean, it's, it's building the whole system. It's going to to provisioning the, the the Docker image, and on the Docker image, it's going to install the 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 node, the node and the React project. So so here, I, I am going to well, the, the the website or the web application must be alive. So at this point, I am going to stop my my pipelines to ask to the to the you know to the user or or the administrator to say, well, uh, did you finish using the website? Click on proceed or continue. So so well, we have time to to look at at things that everything is is working is working well. So we are going to stop the pipeline, and if the People in charge of the person in charge click proceed. We continue the pipeline and the pipeline um, finish with this other shell script that I, I'm going to show you. This is just uh, another shell script to to kill the process. It's, it's... So look what what we are doing is to kill you know with the process ID. You we as you're killing. You know, um, node and the the whole Docker image. So so well, that's like the whole idea of the of the pipeline. As you can see, Jenkins is, is pretty straightforward. It's it's clear clear. So so well, the, the let let's see if we are well. It is running. We we connected. Well, I, I didn't show about the the. Uh, how to connect with GitHub, but it's just to give the, the of course, the, the URL of the, where is the repo, um, and you must provide the, the credentials. So, so well, at this moment, it, it succeeds, success to connect to the repo, and now it's doing the building. The idea is um, some sort of point. You know, React by, by default has a, um, a testing. I mean, it's like the hello world of React, but it still is not alive. So we have to wait a little bit. To... There's, a There's a typo in the, the... host name. OK, let me see. Yeah, thank you very much. Oops. Yeah, it's it's alive. So well, it's our you know a pretty simple but I think illustrative example of, of running the full pipeline. So well, of course you you can take a look of the of the testing in in the. Well, I have the the whole project here, so this is just the. You know, we have these templates for make the, the, the React project. So in the source uh, folder, you can see the, 
the, the, the whole files, you know, the, the scaffolding of, of, of React. So, well, maybe if you want to take a look, but I mean, it was not a React or focus on, on a React project. I, I wanted to show the, the pipeline. So, So, well, as I said here, you can see it reaches the, the, the final step of the phase that we ask to the user to, to decide if it's going to proceed or not. So uh, the pipeline uh, is waiting for the, the user input. So, well, I'm going to say, okay, I finished using the, the website. I see that everything is running and and everything is okay, so so I am going to, to continue. And the last the step is to kill the process. No? So in, in this case, the, the the life of the Docker image is, I mean, is is limited. So just to the to the life of this pipeline. So well, as you can see, everything is on green. Sometimes, well, this is the, the happy part, but sometimes you have a lot of red faces. So um, by instance, you know, in the testing files, you, you can you are going to have a lot of you can have a lot of issues. But well, that that's the idea. So go, going back to my presentation, I, I don't know if. Everything is okay until this point. I think so. Uh, we do have a question from uh, the audience, but it's not necessarily related to this this uh, step. So we'll take it just after we finish the, the slides. Yeah, this is this is where I define the 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 URL of my repository, as you can see, it's like pretty forward. You can use the SLH or, well, you, you can have several authentication methods. This is just uh, user and password. I mean, it can be as simple as that. Um, and then it's the magic. <laughs> so I decided to use Jenkins because, well, at least in Mexico, it's pretty popular. A lot of companies are using. So we, we can find a lot of developers using and the documentation. And, and I said, we have a lot of plugins. So, so, so well, maybe someone and at this point is asking or it's going to think about how many new things I have to learn and it's, it's maybe feeling overwhelmed or angry about it, <laughs> but well, no, it's not that intention. Uh, or the contrary, is the idea is to, to just to have this in, in mind. That, um, so maybe you want to take a look of, of this web developer roadmap. Uh, well, I think that we can share the presentation so, so you can take a look. But th this is pretty interesting because, well, even if you take the, the from or the developer roadmap, you have to share, uh, as you can see in the, in the picture here, we have, of course, the front end, the back end, and in the right side, the DevOps um, developer roadmap. But we share a lot of things, I mean, skills. I mean, to be a, a, a DevOps um, engineer, you, you have to know Git or you have to have some sort of control of the terminal to know about, well, I don't know if GitHub or any rep or GitHub, GitLab or any, any, anything else. Or... So we share a lot of things in common so, so don't feel overwhelmed. Yep. But the idea is to reach that point because just to be from the de developer can be pretty competitive. So, so as I said, it's not expected that one single person to, to manage everything. It's, as I, as I show, 
Mm, it, the idea is, is just to keep that in consideration and to see that the pipelines are not that difficult to implement. Um, also, Jenkins have this blue ocean, open blue ocean. You can install it with um, it's, it's, it's another plugin. So the blue ocean is, is a visual editor. So you can, without a single um, line of code, you can make a pipeline. So so that's the idea to 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 make developers more productive. So. Any conclusion, if you ask me? Well, I, I, the, the good news is that all developers are cloud developers. So as I said, if you, you use JavaScript, you are going to find, or you can use your JavaScript skills to make the pipelines to provision infrastructure as a code. We are seeing a lot of um, tools that uh, allow us to do that. You are a Python, Java, Ruby, uh, you, you are already a cloud developer. <laughs> so <laughs> other, this is kind of fun because it's true. We are seeing a, a, lot, a lot of evolution of the DevOps culture. So we can see now the DevOps, <clears throat> the DevSecOps, the AIO Ops, the Design Ops, even the, there is a movement about no ops that it sounds too radical, but this is true. And the triceratops that is well, like a joke. <laughs> so another conclusion can be, you know, uh, start with a, with monolith, with a monolith. I mean, a, a single piece of software, and then extract microservices. Oh, no, wait. Don't start with the monolith when your goal is some microservices architecture. Okay, okay, sorry. Or you can build a monolith. If you can build a monolith, what makes you think microservices are the answer? Come on. <laughs> so, well, uh, no matter the, the, the decisions on the architectural side, make software that fits in your head. This, this, if you want to take something from this uh, talk, this must be the, the, the general idea. So software that fits in your head because, um, well, you know, um, there, there is something that is called the cognitive load, that this is the total amount of mental effort so, so the idea is to limit the size of software services or products to the cognitive load that the team can handle. So that's the idea, just to understand, make a software that fits on your head and to use the tools that, that um, you think that are better for your team, even if you build it or you just use it like Jenkins, uh, take advantage of that. So I can say, well, based on, um, on my own experience and some surveys, the DevOps, that the DevOps skills of the future are hybrid, not specialized. So uh, at least this role, uh, we need to have someone in the team that talks technical and talks with the business and communicate. You know, it's a combination of soft and hard skills I, I, of course, not, not saying that we are not going to have, you know, sysadmin, the database administrator, of course not. If you are pretty good at Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, of course, you are going to, to have a lot of job. And I can say you, you can earn a lot of money, but well, we need to, to have this, this vision of the whole uh, develop, yeah, and the whole vision of the cycle. So, so a lot of companies agree with that. So, so are moving, uh, so are upskilling up the the developers. So, well, uh, that's it. That's what I got. Thank you. Thank you for, for those slides. And I see that you have 
uh, we, as I said earlier, we already had our first question for for you. Um, coming from uh, a, a viewer, what's your opinion on keeping infrastructure as code configuration in a separate repository, separate from the deployed application itself? Is it is it the best option or is it uh, is it better to keep them both together in the same repository? What do you think? Well, <laughs> I think that I need more information about that. Um, but I mean, uh, you have your code in, in a repo and you have the, the code for provisioning the infrastructure. Yeah, well, yeah. it makes a, a logical sense to have two repos or, or I'm not sure if I'm completely understanding the, the question. So what I can uh, add, I already also said this on, on the chat. Um, and I think it's relatively relevant because actually internally at Pantolog, we, we made the decision to write all of the infrastructure code in TypeScript as a yeah. default option. Yeah. And our, our reasoning was that, you know, uh, Backend developers, front-end developers, usually people already have some sort of JavaScript type, TypeScript knowledge, right? And going with something like Python, which might be more specific, um, it's not gonna foster a lot of communication, but it's not gonna be a lot of people's uh, arguments saying that I don't wanna touch that code, I'm, I don't know the language, right? It's like, Everybody has used or is using JavaScript at some point. So there's no reason not to, to try and add some infrastructure. And going in the line of this fostering collaboration thing, um, I guess that if we would normally start a project by keeping everything in a mono repo, basically, because it would foster collaboration. But if you have a huge architecture and you have a, a lot of things, like maybe stuff that kind of don't fit in just one people people's head, it, it would probably be best to have the separate repositories. Yeah, well, there you go. You mentioned something really interesting at the start of your presentation. Um, DevOps, the, the concept of a DevOps leader, the, uh, a person who is able to talk both with uh, team members, programmers, uh, back end, front end, you name it, but also business folk. How do you view the difference between this role of a DevOps leader and that of, uh, let's say, a solution architect or architects in general? What's your opinion? Well, <laughs> If you ask me about, uh, well, I, I see this kind of questions a lot of times. So um, no matter if it's the architect or the designer or the tester, if you are going to ask me, hey, Alex, um, I don't know, which color, do we need the, this button on red or, or blue? So, so well, I don't know, of course. <laughs> well, I, I mean, this is, we, we have to measure, we, we, and you are the expert. So, so I expect that you told me uh, the right color of this button. Well, well the, the approach will be what we have to, 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 well, in this case about the, the color of the button, well, we can make some, a B testing no? for, for to say something uh, related to the the architect, but the, well, the, the expectation is that you are the the, the 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 expert, you are the specialist. So I trust you. We are going to to do the whole pipeline, and we are going to see the there. There is something that is called the the, the stream value. So we are going to measure if you are giving this a value in each step in, in each phase of this DevOps cycle. So, so at some sort of point, I am going to see if this was the best approach or not, or we need to change something, but well, I mean, you are 
we, we have this architect, we have, you know, I am not an expert on, on testing, no, there, there is a QA engineer. So, so I trust if the QA engineer asks me, oh, hey, Alex, what is the correct amount of the code coverage? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, you are the QA tester. So, so we need this, well, to have this discussion, to this dialogue, and well, I expect your advice uh, to implement. So we stay on the loop. So on, top, on some sort of point, we are going to see the results or not. So, so well, we are going to find the answers. And in, in each phase, I mean, if there is a, um, I don't know, a, a cloud engineer that said, we, we spend a lot of money in the, I don't know, in the login or, the load balancing part, I can say, well, what can I, what can we do about it? So maybe I expect some suggestion to, to avoid this spend. I mean, uh, you are just, you, you don't have authority. You, you are the boss, the, the boss manager, but you, you, are, you are not in this uh, authority position. You are just a, a partner, so so well. You have to have this dialogue with all the people, but well, you, you don't take the decisions. I mean, you encourage people to do something, and and we trust that we are having the the best approach. But yeah, well, it's not expected to me to say, yeah, just use Cognito to to fit this solution. Well, no, it, it's not like that. <laughs> well, I, I hope to. Yeah, to I also would say that architects don't necessarily have that much uh, that power. It's more like soft power. It's the power to influence by giving advice. That's uh, usually the the it's biggest thing. Problem. Yeah. Um, there was also so before I go into the next question, I just want to remind the audience: please uh, ask your questions on the chat so we can, uh, you know start talking about them um, and now to another question uh, that uh, sparked from a, a slide of yours um, you said something really interesting that I'm keen on finding more about you see uh, you said that you you see constantly the companies which are still in the waterfall approach <laughs> and you think they can still use DevOps what do you mean about that so how do you see these waterfallish companies um, using DevOps? Well, <laughs> we, well, in Mexico, we still use a lot of COBOL. I don't know in other countries, but in Mexico, um, particularly in the financial sector, a lot of banks, insurance companies still use COBOL. So, you know, they have this pretty big monolithic pieces of software. So as I said, uh, DevOps is about culture. So, so the idea is to approach to the business uh, um, and to have this room or space for learning. Uh, um, for, I mean, uh, still they have to update and, and to make new features to this system. So, so they, they can be in the same culture Maybe the, the, the requirements doesn't change as fast as you know as in, in a Scrum project. So they can just gather the requirements, they make emphasis, and because this is not so volatile, I can say, so, so they still work and they, they, they are doing a great job because, I, I mean, they deliver, I don't know, month by month, but they are still in this loop, giving a visibility to the business, communicating with the developers and the operations teams. So they are uh, using containers uh, and they, they are in like in the, in the whole DevOps philosophy, but just the requirement doesn't change as much as they can with, you know, another kind of type of project, like, you know, the, the vintage projects that they don't even know the, the, the product itself. So they have to, to change the direction. So, so in these cases, they don't have this 
urgency or I mean it's, it's not user centric. So so they're still users because they adopt the, the whole methodologies. I mean it's a learning and experimentation culture is a blameless culture that, that is pretty important because well sometimes in, in a more traditional uh, way of doing things you know you have to if something fails on production you are looking for guilties or i mean if, if the, not the box approach you don't blame anyone it, it's everyone's uh, fault I mean, the, the idea is not to have failures in production, but sometimes it happens. So, so everyone in, in, on the team is going to learn about that. And, and this is like the same approach that we're trying to to focus on. And when we have, especially I have this kind of customers in Mexico. So, so that is just like a cultural change, as I said. So that's interesting to hear. Um... You're mentioning that these old, older fashion, let's say, or not older fashion, but established sector clients like banking and financial services are, de are deploying in a more waterfallish approach, like something like once a month, something like that. Um, I, I guess they would be arguing that, that it's quite, they're quite agile because previously they may be deployed once a year. Yeah, but... Well, they have some, you know, the compliance, the, the, the governance, the, they have a lot of rules and security issues and, and the compliance, even the, the uh, surrounding Oxley. And there's a lot of compliant things that it is not that easy to, to go into production. So, so that's why it uh, can, can be a month or two. And, and it's not that bad. I mean, it's a pretty stable product. So they don't know to commit every day. So, so well, we see that a lot nowadays. What would be the, the main points that you would want our audience today to go away from this presentation with? Yeah, well, uh, if, if you want to get something from this talk is about that, about um, to be involved in the whole process is not longer valid to say in, in my machine it works. No, <laughs> uh, this is an old, you know, excuse. So to be involved in the whole pipeline is not that complicated. There are, we have, in our fingers, a lot of tools. So I know that at the beginning it can be overwhelming, but, but it's not that well, it's little by little, of course. And, and to have to be involved in, in the, this world, as I said, it's a culture. And, and to make better software, uh, you have to be there. Cool. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on JavaScript operations and for the demo. Uh, it was a pleasure having you and I, we hope to have you again soon. Uh, for our viewers, thank you for joining. Uh, for some, it might be quite late. For some, it might be quite early. Um, it was a pleasure seeing, well, talking to you again. And I hope to uh, see you in a future Pentabar soon. Have a wonderful day. Cheers. Thank you. See you. Stay safe.